Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for, for having the time change today. There was a lot going on in the city. Amen. But we thank God for this great opportunity. I am blessed once again to have none other than my brother, the right Reverend Doctor himself, Reggie Palmer. How you doing today, brother? Good evening, Pastor. I'm doing fine. Once again, it's a pleasure um, to join you this evening. Amen, amen. About God's will and his way. Amen. Would you mind giving us our, um, you mind giving us our uh, opening prayer this, this evening? Sure. Gracious Father, once again we come this evening. God, giving your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, we come thanking you, O oh God, because you allowed us to go through this day without any incidents and accidents, O oh God. Lord, yet again, you kept us, O oh God. You allowed us to come together again, O oh God, to share the gospel tonight, O oh God. Father, we ask you tonight, O oh God, as we share your word, Lord, we pray that you allow both of us to decrease, that you may increase, O oh God. Give us what to say and how to say it, Lord, that your people may be ch changed, O oh God, on this night, O oh God, as we speak your word tonight, Lord. Lord, for your grace and your mercy, O oh God, we thank and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God today. We know that it's a great day in the Lord. Amen. And Amen. we are asking for your continued prayers and, and um, your continued support of what God is allowing us to do here. Uh, we have a lot that's been going on in the real world. I was listening and looking out over the internet and catching the news and um, the changes as we try to regress back into what some would call normal. Um, but I just want to encourage people to let not your heart be troubled. You know, continue to believe in God. And uh, he's going to take care of us. You know, that's going to happen. So I want to look tonight. We're actually in our seventh part of our services with this uh, Bible study series, part seven, part seven. In part seven, we're going to deal tonight, we're going to talk about uh, faith, faith, faith. I mean, I, that's, a, that's a strong word, Elder, yes, faith. Sir. We're yes, be talking sir. about faith. Uh, where, do you, where do you see faith in, as far as it regards to your life? Oh, my God, Pastor um, Faith. Um, when I think about faith, it takes me back to 2011, Pastor, when, we, when we moved here to Florida. Um, we moved here with the understanding that once we arrived in Florida, everything was going to be everything. Mm. Um, but along the way, we found out there were some stumbling blocks, there were some stepping stones, and there was some turbulence. Mm -hmm. And through that, God taught us that we had to have faith and believe in him that it just because we was going through right it wasn't what it looked like okay and okay. so uh, I, I recall riding one day um in my car just 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 having a pentecostal pity party as i must <laughs> say and god reminded me he said um you used to preach faith wow now you got to live it oh wow and that was uh what you call a hit in the gut <laughs> because I was like, oh, my. <laughs> but it, it, it taught me that through it all, I have to trust in God. Amen. Amen. And, and as I look, you know, for those who like to get the definition of things and how things should go, it's saying faith is confidence or trust in a person or a thing. It is a belief that is not based on proof. Mm. <laughs> mm. It is a belief not yet based on proof. And, it, it, and so we're, 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 we're figuring out here that a lot of people, I think, are doing what they believe of what they know, mm -hmm. not what they believe. Yes, yes. I yes. think that's a critical, critical issue that's coming up with us. So let's look here for a minute. And I'm going to ask that Brother Rick would turn up a little bit on number three, give it a little bit more volume there. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that sounds real good, real good. Let's talk about faith. And I, and I want to encourage those out there tonight who have said there is so much has went on, I don't know where my faith at. Mm. You know, I, I, I had, I had a, a plan, if you will, and somewhere along the way, it fell through. Mm. Mm. And I don't know about you, I, I, I'm sure you can recognize, like I recognize, there are so many times in my life that I may have a plan because I've been able to, you know, absorb something and learn it and then I think I can probably manipulate the way it works. Uh -huh. But every now and then, God will bring it back to me and let me know that I can't do anything without him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nothing at all. And I'm going to have to make sure that he is 
the center, not the part of it, not the front of it, not the back of it, but he is the center. I mean, he runs everything. It don't, it don't start, it don't finish, it don't go through without him. And so I'm learning over my life that once you say you want to turn it over to the Lord, you begin to see how great, how great things are. Yes, I, I, I truly uh, believe that, you know, um, sometimes we try to go based on what we know and what we think and what we feel, but God has a way of disrupting your show. Mm. Um, he has a way of just throwing a monkey wrench, that they would say, in the game, yeah. where you have to totally trust and depend on him because um, you may think it's going to go one way, but God takes you another way. And just because he takes you around the long way, um, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work for his good. Amen. And I think that's where we lose track when we have to go the long way. So many times we look for a microwave fix. We want the quick way. Mm, mm, mm. Well, why do you think it's such a challenging time that we're in now? And I could be wrong, but it seems like right, right now there is nothing material you can believe in. Mm. I mean, it's like God took everything that we would have normally held on to from a material standpoint and just moved it out of the way <laughs> to where we're now just can only see this thing the way I guess we're supposed to see it. Yeah. I mean, well, Pastor, as, as I was sharing with you earlier, it seems as though God has put a pause on the whole world <laughs> um, and, and say, look, you guys are used to doing things your way. But once again, I'm going to disrupt what you think you know. And now we we're in a position, Pastor, where. I'm sure you heard people saying, I can't wait to get back to church um, because now what used to be normal is no longer normal. Mm. And we can't, even people with a lot of money, right. they still can't go and do what they want to do because right. God said not yet. <laughs> and so everybody's still yet at a standstill. And so you still got to trust God with a pocket full of money. You still got to trust God broke. Right. You still got to trust God not even knowing. Wow. I don't know. I, 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 I'm hoping that our brothers and sisters out there are taking this quality time with God and not allowing themselves to fall through the cracks. Um, and I always tell people, we're talking about isolation, not separation. Yes. That's what they've been promoting. They've been promoting isolate yourself, isolate yourself, isolate yourself. God is saying, don't confuse isolation with separation. Mm. That's not what I want you to do. I don't want you to depart from me. and I don't want you to, to do something different. I want you to stay with me because I believe that there is something that I have for you to do. You just got to finish the process. And I, I think sometimes we get caught up so much in the problem. Our faith is in the problem mm -hmm. that we don't have a faith in the process. Mm. Because we, our faith is all caught up in what we're seeing, what right. we're observing. What, what, and then we regurgitate that back to either past uh, situations, past thoughts, past issues. Or we're so far ahead in the future about what we want to do, what we want to be, where we want to go, that we're not dealing with a present problem presently. That mm -hmm. makes sense? Yes, sir. You know, I, I, I learned to trust the process even, for, even before we got into this process. And as strange as it may sound, we're talking about faith. And I think I've been blessed more through this pandemic. Wow. <laughs> I think God has really showed up and showed out on the Palmer's behalf right. through this pandemic because we was already trusting him. Right. We was already walking by faith. And he just says, well, since you've been walking by faith, I'm just going to throw a little bit of this in there for you. Right. I'm going to give you a little bit of that. But so this wasn't anything new to us because I, my, my faith and my trust is built on him anyway. Wow. Well, you think about this. And, and, and I, I want to go back in the Bible for a second before we get into the Bible study tonight. Isn't it amazing that th through, the, through the plagues that the Israelites were with, with Moses, how, though it talked about the destruction that was happening on the land, prior to that, Pharaoh was killing all the babies. Mm -hmm. But during the plagues, the Bible doesn't speak about those babies continuing to die. Pastor, all we got to do is trust the process. All we have to do is trust the process. So many times we try to get ahead of God mm -hmm. because we so in this in this time we we so brilliant we so book knowledge we so biblically mm. knowledge that we get we get so caught up in what we know and not who we know right and so if we trust God through it all he got us covered he told us he teaches us that he would never leave us nor forsake us right even through this pandemic everybody is running scared everybody is just going here and there and don't know what to do but if your belief and your trust is anchored in God mm -hmm. 
mm. like the, like the blood post was on the mantle. Right. He'll pass by. <laughs> so all we gotta do is trust them. <laughs> I, I'm excited tonight because for me, you know, this has been you know uh, just a, a different time for me. But I gotta be honest, I feel stronger now than I did prior to. Mm. And I'm not saying that I didn't believe before this. I'm just saying I am stronger. And when you go through anything that God is putting you through, his purpose is that you should come out stronger, wiser. You should come out healthier in your spirit. You should come out with more of joy, more of peace. You should not come out of it a train wreck. Mm. If you're doing through something with God. Right. And what I'm seeing is a lot of us, we go through things without God. So we have the same results when we get out of it that we had on the other side going through it. Wow. It's amazing. We, we, you know, we were just talking here uh, 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 Monday night on our men's, um, men's line. And uh -huh. We were talking about Jesus. And, 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 and I know you had something you threw in. I want you to see if you can remember back what you were saying. We were talking about what Peter and them were fishing, and they couldn't find nothing over there. And mm -hmm. how the morning they woke up, Peter said, let's go fishing. And all everybody said, let's go fishing, because mm -hmm. that's what the norm. Right, right. Right. Really no purpose behind it. Really no thought process behind it. And then later on, Jesus, who they did not know at the time, mm -hmm. once he said the disciple who loved Jesus mm -hmm. says, it is the Lord. It seemed like everybody's eyes open. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? It sounds like when you have faith, my faith ought to, ought to open your eyes. Yes, yes. If you're hanging around me, we hanging out together, we're around each other, I should be able to say, man, that's Jesus right there. You should be able to say, you know what, that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you're battling with that, then maybe just maybe somewhere our faith are not connecting. Our iron is not sharpening one another. I, either I'm a distraction to you or you're a distraction to me or right. we're a distraction to each other. But sooner or later, our faith should match up. To a point where if he's given revelation, one of us should be able to give each other confirmation. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of amazing we talk faith. Um, on the way over, you know, my son, my youngest boy, was a little discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, he's been working hard all month long and um, not getting the outcomes that he feels should he do deserve. Right. You know, you, you, you close this, but something happened along the way. And so I just called him just to encourage him. I said, look, man, regardless of what you're going through, you got to still yet trust God. Right. You have to trust the process. I t and I explained to him, what you're doing now, God see everything that you're doing. Yes. You just have to go through the hard times, and then you're just one recruit away from your explosion. You've right. done it before. You just got to trust God through this process. Wow. It's not easy wow. as it was before. Wow. So it's and amazing. And it's amazing. It seems like, and as grandma and I used to say, just when you're around in the corner, your faith is tested the most. Oh, my God. That's how you know you're on your way out of oh it. Oh, my God. Yes. Because you're at a point where you say, I just can't do this. And I hope I'm helping somebody. Yes. Lord yes. Jesus. Just when you're saying, I, just, I can't go any further. I can't move anymore. I can't give anymore. That's when you, you're actually standing at the door right then. All you got to do is just turn the knob yes. and walk into what God yes, got sir. for you. But the enemy's telling you the door locked. Yes. Ain't nobody yes. home. Yes. God out doing something else. He ain't got time to deal with your situation right now. So just go back and sit down in the waiting room mm -hmm. and feel sorry for yourself. But I'm here to come to tell somebody, with your faith and believing God is going to open that door, you've got to be able to pop up, walk to that door and say, it's my time. Yes. Pastor, I just, as you was talking, you know, it's, thank you, Lord. <laughs> just because the lights turned out don't mean it's dark. Wow. <laughs> I don't preach. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we think just because we're in the dark, we can't see. Wow. Moses didn't realize what he had in his hand to the Lord remind him, hey, what do you have in your hand? Right. And sometimes God has to remind us. Right. Even though it's dark, you still yet can see. Oh, my God. Man, I hope we're helping somebody. Give three people hit me up and say, you right there. You right there, pal. <laughs> Amen. Bless you, Brother Kennedy, today. So let's look at some scripture. Let's look at some text tonight. I know you all are ready to see what God would have of us tonight. We're talking about, brothers and sisters, keys to a lasting ministry. We're actually in our part seven, our last part of this series, and tonight we're talking about faith. My God, my God, faith. And so let's look at some text tonight. I want everybody who can and will go to the book of Romans, the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. Book of Romans, 10th chapter. And we're going to look at the 17th verse. Book of Romans, chapter 10, and we're just going to part there with verse 
17. Read that for me then, Elder. Romans 10, verse number 17. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, hold on one more time. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, what, what, what did God give you out of that, Elder? Pastor, you know, when, when we talk about faith, I mean, sometimes we say, well, I hear you, mm -hmm. but do you really hear me? <laughs> and, 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 and when it talks about faith come by the word of God, it comes through the preacher. Oh, wow. And so many times we come to church and the preacher is telling, it's, it's right on target. He's at your bus stop, but you get so caught up. Well, he's talking about me. No, he's not talking about using him right. at that moment to tell you what's going on in your life. Hey, man, ain't even trying to mess with your microphone. Yeah. We're going to fix that. You don't want this word to get out tonight. <laughs> but it's coming out tonight. <laughs> yes. Brother Rick, we're going to <laughs> Channel 2. Blessed be the Lord. Turn up Channel 2 for us, for, our, for, our, for, for Elder tonight. Amen. Give him amen. a little bit more. Give him a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Shoot up number two. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, Elder. This sounded really, really powerful to me. Amen. And this is what I want people to catch. I, I tell people all the time, every, every distinct word in the Bible has a distinct meaning. So let's, let's break this down. He says, so faith mm -hmm. comes from hearing. Pause. That's a comma. Every time there's a comma, all my English majors, that means there's a pause. Yes. If there's a period, that means stop. And catch what's going on. Yes. So he says, pause here. He says, so faith comes from hearing. Comes from hearing. Comes from hearing. Faith comes from, can I, can I be transparent? Yes, sir. Here's the problem. Can't nobody tell us nothing. Mm. We grown, right? <laughs> can I go a little deeper? Go ahead, sir. When the Bible's using the word hearing, we confuse it with the natural version of hearing. Mm -hmm. We hear well. But we don't listen well. Oh, my. Oh, my. We hear. <laughs> yes. Sir. But we don't listen. Yes. And so what we end up doing then is, because when I hear something, usually it's something that I can process in knowing what it is. Sound of a car horn. Mm -hmm. Sound of gunshots. Yes. Right? Yes. I can hear that. Listening causes me to process something. <laughs> and so you cannot. Get your faith up unless you process your faith. Yes. Meaning you have to go through a situation in your life that you can take notes, spiritual notes. I, I, I try to tell people all the time, it, God messes with me all day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm writing stuff down. I'm writing stuff in my hand. I'm writing stuff on a piece of paper. I get on the phone with you or one of the other brothers or somebody I'm talking. God just pops stuff in my head like this here because he said he'll give you more than you have room to receive. We confuse that with, with monetary blessings yes, and yes. houses and cars. I want to get past all that. What he's trying to tell you is I'll give you more knowledge than you can even keep in your brain. Mm, mm. That just messed somebody up out there. Huh? That messed somebody because up. Because I'm <laughs> telling you, over 40 different authors wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. Most of them did not even know each other, nor did they meet each other, nor did they have the time span to get to know one another. Wow. So they had to have an isolation time with God that he gave them what to write. Yes. But they couldn't just hear him. They had to listen to him, meaning they had to take their personal issues and put them to the side and say, God, I know you're speaking to me to write this for your people. Let me get, can I get, let me get secular for a minute. Go ahead, sir. And I may be off track here, but I just really believe this occurred. I do not believe. Paul could have wrote two-thirds of the New Testament had he not went to jail. Mm. Well, quiet time, Pastor. You notice a lot of people go to jail, they find Christ, so they say. <laughs> I, I, that, that isolation yeah. time was not separation time for Paul. Paul took that opportunity to sit there and not just hear God, but listen to God. Can I go? Let me go another route. I do not believe Martin Luther King could have gotten the speeches that he wrote mm. That I have a dream if he had not had some quality time in jail. Yes. Now, I'm not promoting jail. Don't twist what I'm saying. Right, right. What I'm saying is he had so much going on on the outside. People were pulling at him for so many different ways. Exactly. Folk were trying to get him to change his sermons yes. to not be so, so, so spiritual. Just talk about civil rights and those other kinds of things. And don't get me wrong. I understood that. But, but, but what, 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 what God was trying to say is do not lose the core mm. of what I've given you. So I need to get you one-on-one. -on -one so that you will even know when your time is up. People said the man know the day, know the hour that his time come. But he said he didn't say no spirit. Mm. He said no man. That means no flesh 
will know when God is getting ready to come take you from this place. But your spirit began to go. How do you say that? He said, absent with the body mm. is present with the Lord. That you just, God, begin, you begin to not just hear God, you begin to listen to God. And this is how you know. He says, so faith comes from hearing. And the more you hear God, the less you hear gossip. Mm. Oh, wow. The more you hear God, the less you hear gossip, the more you hear the gospel. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm flipping that. But the more gossip you listen to, the less gospel you hear. Yes. The more gospel you hear, the less gossip you can take. After a while, look here, man. Look here. Hold on, bro. Look, look. If you don't like where you at, I get it. Listen, go go talk with your leader. Go talk with your, look. Go get counseling. Let's let's talk with your wife. Talk with your husband. Listen, let's go to the. Let's get something done. Let's yes. don't just keep talking. About it. I'm tired of hearing it. I'm 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 listening. Yes. I'm I'm tired of hearing it. Right. You ever hear people say I'm tired of hearing it? Yes. What they're tired of hearing is the repetitiveness of nothing getting done. Nothing getting done. You know when you 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 just can't hear the word. We have to accept the word, and we have to believe the word. Okay. A lot of times we want to hear it, right? But we don't want to accept it. Mm. You know, well, sometimes we can talk to we can, you, you, those of us who has kids out there. Sometimes you talk to your kid, and they they get all upset with you because you t- they're not accepting what you're saying. To right. Them. And this is the same thing when God is speaking to us. Sometimes we don't want to accept what God is saying. However, we want to receive the blessings, mm. but we don't want to accept. Mm. Sometimes it's even the consequence. You know, I, you brought this right back to me, El. I tell people that, and, and, and this is what, you, if you're a parent out there, I want you to hear this clearly. As long as your children receive and hear your love, your discipline as love, then the faith in them will continue to receive you as their parent. Mm-hmm. The day they take your, your discipline, your love, that you're giving them, that discipline as discipline, they no longer are seeing you in the same value that you are. Mm. And now they're, they're hearing you, but they're not listening. Yes. So once they turn off the listening ear, grandma say you're just beating your head against the wall. That's, that's ain't nothing, ain't nothing going to change. They're going he- to hear you. Yes, ma'am, go right out there and do what they want to do. They're going to hear you say, yes, sir, and go right out there what they want to do. They're going to hear you say, oh, yes, pastor. Oh, yes, elder, you talking. I hear you. Boy, you talking to me. And get right out there on Tuesday afternoon and say, well, listen, pastor, the Lord talked to me too. Yes. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? And, until, they, the, until, they, until they run into that brick wall, then all of a sudden they need something from God and mm. need something from the man of God, then all of a sudden we have an act of listening here. All of a sudden, now we can listen with a purpose when he was trying to s- explain the same thing just a few days later. So why does God have to get us in a place or position where we have to run into the brick wall before we say, Lord, now I hear you? Well, and, then you and, and when you look through the scripture, this is why I tell people, if you really read this Bible, this thing is so laid out, it, it's mistake proof. Mm. There, there's no way you can make a mistake if you really read this Bible. The people of God kept making the same mistake over and over and over. And every time, God put them right back in oppression, right back in oppression. It was a new kingdom mm-hmm. over them. Every time, every time he got them out of it, they, want, they wanted to go right back in it. Every time he got one out, they went right back in it. And here we are the same way today. We, God gets us out of something, and we go right back to that same person, that same place, that same thing. And we keep saying, God, please, I need a change in my life. I need you to do something different. God said, well, every time I get you where you can be different, you go back to the same hog pen. Mm. Mm. Eat of the same slop. Vomit the same stuff you just took in, and you're asking for a difference? It's not possible. Your faith is what you need in order for you to say, I don't just hear it. Look at the comma. Mm. He says, and hearing through the word of Christ. So now he said, not only should I hear it, for myself, but I got to know where it's coming from mm. because it's easy. Itchy ears, man, they talk about this stuff. It, it is so easy over time. You know how the Bible talks about you have a zeal, mm-hmm. but no knowledge? No knowledge. Right? Then you get knowledge and lose your zeal. Lose your <laughs> Help me, Elder. I, I, you know, I'm trying to grow today. Pastor, I, I just know when you talk about faith, you can, be, you can be in a situation where you don't even know how you're going to make it out. But if you just trust and you believe. We have somebody out there tonight, Pastor, that has felt like giving up. Mm. Somebody was having a Pentecostal pity party earlier. 
Somebody didn't know what to do because things is not working on their time. But the Bible teaches that but we would know the day, not the time. His time is not our time, and our time is not his time. All we have to do is stand still right. and see the salvation of the Lord. We just, but but we so we so busy running right. that we can't stand still. We so busy running that we don't get that isolation time, that time we need with God, where we separate ourselves mm-hmm. from all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. We so busy running, but then when we run all day long, it seems like what have what have I accomplished? And then at the end of the day, you saying, "Poor me." You know, even artists, singers. When they really are ready to do real work, mm-hmm. right? They're really trying to get a masterpiece of a, of a music piece done. They isolate themselves in a booth. Mm. And then even within, well, first they isolate themselves within a room. Then within the room, they go into a booth. Then within the booth, they put on headphones. Mm-hmm. They're getting deeper and deeper and deeper to where no one on the outside can distract them. Mm. But Pastor, with, even with God, we have to find that secret place. We have to have that golden hour where God speaks to us. Mm-hmm. And we know that God speaks to us during this time right. because he does it every single time. Right. My time is early in the morning, 4.35 o'clock in the morning when everybody in the house is asleep. Nothing is moving. Right. Nothing is moving. That's when God does his best work with Palmer. <laughs> because everything else is distraction. Yes. And so you got to have that. The old people used to have their, their, their prayer closet. Right. Where they had a place Show where they could steal away. Show sure no. And the thing is, they sat there, and sometimes it got quiet in there. Yes, sir. And you would say, hey, are you all right? Yeah, I'm, baby, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just listening to God. Right. But we don't sometimes, as you talked about, we hear, but we don't want to listen. Even in our prayer life, we pray, and we get up, but we don't stay there and listen to God. So that's the difference. There is so much that God is trying to show us tonight. And I pray that my brothers and sisters out there who are looking for a breakthrough are sharing this information with others. So my first point is saying, when you're talking about a lasting ministry, we're not just talking about a lasting ministry within a church. A lasting mi- Your home is your ministry. Okay? You, if you're a parent, that's a ministry. If, if, if you're married, that's a ministry. You're on your job, it's still a ministry because there's some form of service and faith and loyalty, and all the other words that we talked about, focus, uh, value, all of that still plays a major part in whatever you're doing. So tonight we're talking about faith. So my first point is, your faith must be receivable. Mm. You got to want to receive faith. You got to want to say, I don't just want to hear it. I want to be able to listen, and then I want to do something with it. I want to know where it's coming from. He said, hearing through the word. He said, don't just be hearers of the word, but what? Be doers. Oh, my you gotta, you gotta do something. You just can't hear it. How how can you hear something and it don't compare you to do something? <laughs> because you're not listening. You hear it, but you don't and, hear and it. The same compulsion I have when somebody talking about me uh-huh. to go to them and say, "Are you talking about me?" Yes. It's the same compulsion I have when he says I should go to the altar and let God deal with me. Mm. How come I fight that, Pastor? That that you know. Altar, and I, I said, sometimes I say, man, altar, altar is really tricky. Altar call is real tricky because you have people knowing that God is nudging at them, but they look around mm. until that first person make a move. Then after the first person make a move, then you, you see another one tip out. You know, I, I, I came to realize, Pastor, that it ain't about the other people. It's no. about me and my relationship with God. Right. I got to get it right. I got to say, Lord, look, Lord, I need you and I need you now. And when we are willing to just step out of ourself, because mm-hmm. that's what keeps us all bound up. Right. Self keeps us bound up, and it don't allow us to get to God because the carnal mind is in the flesh. It doesn't allow us to get to God. But when you just say, you know what, I'm about to go for broke. I'm about to go for ugly. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's listening. Mm-hmm. Lord, I'm coming to you because I need you now. Hmm. I love it. I love it. We're talking about it. Do you yes. have a receivable faith? Do you have a receivable faith? You don't just want to hear God. You want to do something when you get it. Yes, yes. You want to share it with somebody. You want to you enlighten somebody. You want to let somebody know you ain't got to keep standing out there on the highway at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with cars are going up and down the road at 100 miles an hour. You can stand on the bank and wait on what God got for yes. you if you just hold on. Just hold on. 
My God. So we're understanding here that faith is receivable. We must have a receivable faith. And I want to ask somebody tonight, do you have a receivable faith? Are you willing to step out into new territory? And that's another thing I want to talk about right quick is this is how you know God is elevating you. He takes you someplace you ain't been before. Yes. Yes. Unfamiliar territory, I call it. Yes. And those of us who are in leadership, those of us who are, who are, who are in those positions, it's, it's, it, it, as you say, it, you make it look easy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I can get up there and say what he's saying. Anybody can say that. Oh, I, I can go out there. I, I can do this. I can do that. But I'll tell people, you don't know the sacrifices and, 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 and the, the letting go of yourself and, 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 and the smoothing of the rough stones in your life in order for God to use you to build somebody else's, not even your, to build somebody else's faith yes. through what he's building in you. That, that's, a, that's a price. Pastor, this, 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 this just taught me that it's not even about me. It's not about me. It have nothing to do with me. I recall years ago, and I, 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 I used to pray this prayer just because it sounded good. Right. Lord, use me. Lord, send me. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Fast until that day came <laughs> that I had to go and I had to go alone. Wow. And he reminded me that you said, send me, I'll go. Right. So, therefore, he sent me an unfamiliar territory where I was no longer comfortable with the things that I knew. He oh, pushed wow. me outside of what I knew, mm -hmm. and he taught me something new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you're following me out right. there. But right. it's, 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 when you're following God, it becomes about him it has totally nothing to do about with you it's all about god you know this faith thing people try to relate it to a situation when this has all to do with salvation mm. it's back to what you're saying it's not about you yet it still is about, it's not about what you are receiving it's what you're producing from what you're receiving how it's going back out mm -hmm. the, the key ingredient to anything you receive is that you are a giver of it yes Yes. That is the completion that heightens your faith. We take so much stuff in that we keep to ourselves. Mm. That's why our faith is low, because it's not being practiced back to somebody else. It's not springboarding off of me back to somebody else. Then I can say, man, I know it worked. Hi, it worked for me, man. I told Palmer about it. It worked for Palmer. Yes. Yeah. Palmer told Johnson about it. Johnson told Smith about it. Smith told Brown about it. Brown told Green about it. And next thing you know, we got a room full of people who all have a receivable faith because they were able to pass it to somebody else. Pastor, I'm just sitting here as you, as you talk, and I'm, I'm just, if you already don't have anything to lose, then what's wrong with stepping out on faith? Wow. You have everything else to gain. Right. Because you're already at a position where you're so low that you feel like you can't get up. What else do you have to lose? Right. Other than trust in the word of God. If the word of God say, get up, shake yourself off, dust yourself off, it will get better. Right. Get up, dust yourself off, shake yourself off. Believe that it will get better. One of the things that I used to do, Pastor, when I when I was at that low point in my life and 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 I just felt like I I just I just didn't know. I used to go get my best pair of pants, my best shirt, my best suit. Right. I used to dress myself up. And in dressing myself up, it made me feel better. Ah. Just by getting up out of the bed. Right. Taking a shower, putting on my best clothes, putting on my best cologne, and going out there. And I was, I was broke, busted, and disgusted, but people thought I had something oh because my. I looked like something. Man, so I, 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 Elder, I'm praying. <laughs> it's some Mount Zion folk on this line tonight. <laughs> I'm hoping and praying they're not sitting somewhere else, not paying attention. This is this is good, good, good groove, good food, right for your body, for your spirit. Listen to this, guys. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter eleven, and I want to look at verse six. Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter 11. I want to encourage somebody tonight. This is not the time to second guess what God got you. Oh, yeah. This is the time now to finish the course. Read that for me, Elder. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7. 
I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. Mm -hmm. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm. For he that come to God must believe that he is, mm. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, wow. But without faith, it is impossible, I repeat, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What, what, what God give you from that, Elder? Pastor, you have to not only, you have to, what we have to realize in this, in this here passage, it's faith, trust, and believe all work together. Mm. You can't have one without having the other. Right. And it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. I mean, is it possible to please God? Mm. If you don't have faith, um, it's a for faith cometh, for faith, for he that cometh must believe that he is. We must believe that God is we say he is. Hmm. And, and so many times we say, well, I trust God. I believe God. But when things get tough, we tend to walk out on God hmm. because we don't see where it's coming from. You know, I, 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 I tell you, it's just I, I tell you through this pandemic, God has been blessing the Palmas. My and, God. And, 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 and so in, in the blessing the Palmas, I I got to I got to soar back into the ministry, hmm. you know, and, and so. I, I had a I had a project that I was trying to accomplish this week, and I right. told my wife, I said, you know what? I said I got a plan, <laughs> and she said, yeah. I said, yeah, I got a plan. I said I'm gonna get what I need to get back here to Florida. Right. And she said, okay. And we had a little stash stashed away. Right. I said we're not gonna have to use very little or none of what we have put away. And she said, really? I said, oh yeah, I got a plan. Believing that I had a plan. But God showed me. All you got to do is trust and believe. Uh huh. I get to work. My manager say, uh, your check going to look a little different. I said, oh, is it? So I, I couldn't wait to get up Friday morning to see how different it looked. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when what I was your woke, mind when you heard that, Elder? I don't think I said it was, oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I looked at my eyes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I said about three times, my wife was like, what's wrong? I said, oh, Jesus. And she said, well, now you can get what you have to get. I said, I told you I had a plan. I had faith that I was going to get it. I didn't know how I was going to get it, but I knew I was going to get it. Wow. But I knew God. All I had to do was continue to trust God. I already was broke. I ain't have nothing else to lose. You see what I'm going, Elder? <laughs> in poker, you can't push all in and hide chips. Mm. That's called cheating. Yes, sir. And they'll kick you out of there. Yes, sir. They don't kill you in the if parking lot. They don't kill you first. <laughs> <laughs> we got people that are saying, I'm all in. But I'm going to hold on to this thing. Mm. I'm all in, but I can't let him or her go yet. I'm all in, but I still like hanging over this side of town. So God is saying, listen, I thought you said you was all in. Well, I am all in, Lord. No, you can't be all in because even Bobby Womack said you can't be two places at one time. Oh, my. Oh, my. So we got to start asking ourselves, where are we at in our faith? He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That, that saying right there, you must first believe that, you, that your faith is possible. Mm. Mm. See, a lot of us don't have possible faith. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Huh? We Ooh, got Jesus. a faith, but it's not possible. It doesn't move much. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't take anything to the next level. It's kind of a, like a, um, um, I know church. I know when to stand up. I know when to sit down. I know when to clap my hands. I know when the music gets a little faster, we're going to try the little war cry or something like that. Or I know that when pastor getting ready to say, and so, oh, here we finna ride on the, on, the, on the magic carpet. But in reality, I'm not hearing and then listening to process that my amen is possible. Mm. I don't have a faithful amen. I don't have a faithful hallelujah. I don't have a faithful preach, sir, preach, sir. I'm just saying it out of rhetoric and out of repetition with no faith behind it, so it has no substance. And with no substance, what do I have to hope for? Pastor, you know, faith is easy when everything is going right, mm -hmm. when you have no worry, when you have no care. Right. It's easy to say, I have faith, I trust, I believe in God. But as soon as you hit a stumbling block, 
then you go back to the familiar. Right. You go back to what you're used to. You go back to him. You go back to her because you're used to him and her. Right. But you're not trusting in God. Right. But as long as the ride was smooth, <laughs> I have faith. I believe. I trust God. Girl, you should try God. Ain't he all right? But let something come along the way. Ugh. A turbulence. Have you ever rode on an airplane, Pastor, oh, yeah. and all of a sudden it was, it was, you, you, you going fine? Yeah. Then all of a sudden you hit one of those air pockets. Yes, sir. Then your eyes kind of get a little it, big, it you know, and you, you shake. But I learned that I'm going to look at the pilot, at, 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 the, at the stewardess. Right. As long as they ain't going crazy, Sound I like think we're in a good place. On. Their faith is already set. Right. So I'm in a good if, place. If they're, if they're going to a different mode, then there's something different going on. Yes, sir. And what am I saying? We're supposed to be angels of God that people ought to see that, that extra that comes out of us. They ought to see an extra praise out of us. They ought to see an extra hallelujah out of us for them to say, okay, if I see Ella Palmer's pumped up about it, God must be moving. For If he did it for him, I know he's going to do it for me. Yes, yes. I was talking to a buddy the other day, and we were talking about where we came from and where we at now. And I said, you know what, man? As tough as you may be, whatever you're going through right now, I said, I want to encourage you. If God did it for me, you in the right place. If God can <laughs> save me, <laughs> everybody has a chance. You know, so you just gotta trust and believe. Yes, sir. Because I, I, yes, I, I didn't. I just, I just know who I was then. Yes. Sir. I didn't know I would be who I am today. Right. But somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. Right. They took the time to pray for me, and through those prayers, now I trust and believe that if He did it for me, He can do it for someone else. You know, if I just be honest with myself. Can I be transparent? Yes, yeah, sir. Boy, I lie to Stanley so fast, it make his head swell. Ooh. I have him believing everything on the other side of town <laughs> is worse. You know, it ain't no, it's better right. than what's going on at home. Yes. And I have to start re reminding myself to remind other people, don't get caught up in the hype mm. that you the only one going through something. Yes. You don't the only one being dragged through the mud. You don't only I tell people, God makes, uh, he allows a mess to give you a message to confirm you are a messenger. Mm. How can you be a messenger who don't have a message who ain't never been through no mess? Mm. Pastor, I used to tell people when, 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 when my wife lost her job, nobody never knew. <laughs> she was off the job for, I don't know, almost five months or so. Mm -hmm. Nobody never knew. I used to say, you know what? I thank God I don't look like what I'm going through. <laughs> I never, nobody never knew. We didn't even share with the church. Right. To one, Bible, to one Sunday school, it got good to And she shared, look, I ain't been working in five months. What you complain about? And everybody, everybody mouth hit the floor because we didn't look like what we was going through. We didn't right. lose a step. We didn't stop paying tithing. We didn't stop giving our tithing and our offering. We didn't stop coming to church. We didn't stop praising God. If anything, our praises was elevated. Right. Based on what we was going through because we know if we just hung around the church long enough, God was going to show up. Yes, sir. And we had enough faith to stand. You know, this is such a great topic tonight. And I can almost feel because God is moving, the enemy is distracting people mm. from what they could have got tonight. Yes. I don't know why I sense that, but I just do. I just sense that there are a lot of people who could have used it. So don't worry about it. I'm a, I'm a, we're going to replay this again yes, later yes, on because I need some folk to come back and catch this again. Yes, sir. God is trying to enlighten us. He says, look, he says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, mm. not see him. Mm. You got to see. You got to stay there, Pastor. You just can't say, well, well Lord, I thank you. And you get, you, get, you got to continue. You got to stay there. Many seeking is my Ooh. God. You're right there, Elder. Many people see God, but they don't seek God. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing. I see God for who I believe God is, but I do not seek God because my faith is not made possible. When all I have to say, it is the Lord. Once I begin to shout, it is the Lord, my faith is now made possible for the impossible, that now my mess makes me, that gives me a message, reminds me that I am a messenger of God, and then I can walk into what's going on and say, all is well. Mm. Mm. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. 
my God. Now, you do the invisible is Christ. Just believe and just trust in him that anything that I ask. <laughs> he say, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. What are you doing? He's giving you the blueprint. You just got to do something. So now he's saying, listen, you just confirmed. Now he's saying that faith is achievable. <laughs> listen. First we said faith, your faith must be receivable. Now he's saying your faith must be achievable. He said it, without faith it's impossible to please God. So if I don't have the desire to achieve the faith that I need to be who I say I am. See, folk don't know who they are, yo. They know what the streets call them. Oh my. They know what, this, what, what they've heard growing up. You'll be like you're no good daddy. Yes, yes. Huh? Yes. You'll be like you're no good mama. So you know that part. All we got to do is hold on, Pastor. Yes, sir. This, 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 this here time that we're in now, if your faith is not stronger than what you went in, something's wrong. Something's wrong. A lot of people is giving up while we still blessing. <laughs> you, 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 you think about our ministry. Yes, sir. This is our ministry, right? Yes, we can talk about our ministry. Yeah, we talk about we our, talk about I don't know ministry. about nobody else. You talk about our ministry. Yeah, talk about our. But think about how many families that this ministry was a lot, has been allowed to help through this pandemic. We, we, God said, look, here, here, take this and help this family. Right. Take this and help that family. Right. We ain't asked for nothing in return. He said, just go do. Yeah. And, and, and in that, he's still blessing us. But you know what? You say, look, man, I don't even want it. Let's go give it to some. Let's find somebody else to give it to. This is the type of God that we serve because we, we realize that in faith, by faith. Yes. I'm going to give this to my other ministry brothers right. in faith, believing that God has already got us covered. Listen, and, 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 and all of us don't have to be promoted to the public eye mm -hmm. all the time. Right. Now, I do believe that God will give you critical times to do something that's going to increase somebody's faith because they're catching it at that time. Yes. You get redundant with it, they lose the value in yes. it. Oh, they're always feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're always giving something to some people. They always do it. So they begin to lose value in it. So when God says, you know what, I want you to promote this one on this date, mm -hmm. but these five right here, that's under the table. Mm -hmm. That's between me and you and the, and yes, the fence post. Yes, yes, yes. Because I don't need them to start looking at what's going on over there and miss what I'm trying to get right here. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times I tell people, God don't compare you to do nothing mm. on the back end. Right. And, and you know, Pastor, it ain't even about giving. Sometimes God may give you a word. A word. <laughs> How you doing? To go share with somebody. I, to call on a, man, look, I just called to say, man, I love you. Yeah. Keep the peace. You know, I, I hit a few brothers up here and there doing Mother's Day, and I just sent them a text just saying, hey, we know. Mm -hmm. I know. You know. And I said, God, there's so many brothers I know that have lost their mothers. Yes. They've lost this. And I'm, I'm spending more time trying to encourage other people. I ain't even got time to think about my own mama. Because God got you. God got me. <laughs> God got to the point where God said, I need you to take this faith you got in me, receivable and achievable. Uh -huh. I need you to go cross town mm -hmm. to a mother who don't have a son. Mm. Now, you don't have a mother. Mm. She don't have a son. Oh, wow. I want you to go over there and remind her that she still got a son. And while you over there, I'm going to remind you, you still got, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You still going to remind that you still got a mother. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of faith we ought to have that when God sends us somewhere, something is going to happen, Elder. Something's going to get changed. Something's going to get elevated. Something's going to be set free. Yeah. When God sends you, somebody should be changed. <laughs> For the better. Yes, sir. You know, but I, I just, I just, I just love God because. Out of all we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, he don't allow us to get caught up in what we're going through. He still give us enough strength mm -hmm. to help somebody else along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. And he just remind, constantly remind us, Palm, it's not about you. It's not about what you're going through. I hear you. Somebody else have, a have it a little bit worse than you today. Yeah. Yeah. So I need, this is what I need from you. I need you to be my messenger to serve it to, this, my messenger to serve my message to the person that's going through some mess. I think about one of our deacons, Deacon, Deacon Milton, and you know this brother is basically past the word quadriplegic. I mean, he, he 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 comes in his motorized wheelchair. Yes. On Sundays, and I sit there and I look at him and I say, I don't know what I had, but it ain't bigger than this. Mm. I think about the little things. Mm. 
to, to not be able to get up and run. But he take that wheelchair and spin it around here on this floor as if he was running. Yes. Because the faith he has and the love he has for God allows him to express it in whatever way he can express yes. it. What am I saying? Some of us have the ability to express God at such a high level, but we act like we're stuck in a wheelchair and can't get out. We're binded. We're bound. Mm. And we can't do what we normally would be able to do in God. Because we're stuck in a Pentecostal pity party. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> Poor me. And somebody would love to have what you have. Uh huh. And every day I go to work, Pastor, I'm reminded that you're a blessed person because every morning I drive to work, I see five, six people sleeping on mm. the bench. Yes, sir. And it constantly reminds me. Don't get it that twisted. Look, man. Praise me for what you have right. right now. Right now. Don't don't get caught up in what you don't have. Right now. Thank me for what you have right now. Yes. And he reminds me every single morning, it could have been you. It should have been you. Wow. But because of my grace and my mercy, I saw not fit. You. Not you. My God, we're learning today, my brothers and sisters. We are now in our seventh part series of faith, keys to a lasting ministry. And so we're going to move to our Last and final scripture, we pray thus far you have been blessed. We pray that you will continue to listen to what's going on tonight. I, 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 I need a little bit more of my Mount Zion folk on tonight. I don't know why I'm feeling like I'm, I'm, we're kind of out here on the island. But I thank God for those who are on tonight. This is very, very powerful. This is very, very personal to me when we're talking about faith. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Ephesians, Ephesians, chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Read that for us, will you, Elder? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 reads as such. For by grace... Are ye saved through faith? And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not yourself, it is a gift of God, not of the works, lest any man should boast. Amen. What say you on that, Elder? What God give you? This don't have nothing to do about you. <laughs> it's just that simple. This is not even about you at all. Don't get it twisted. I'm not going to even let you think it's about you. Right. But it's by his grace. His grace is the foundation, the foundation of our salvation. Right. So this don't have nothing to do with you, man. So let, I'm not going to even wow. let you allow you to be in a position so you can even boast about it. Wow. This have nothing to do about you, but everything about Christ. Wow. But by grace. But I just learned that his grace will take us where his mercy will keep us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm getting excited <laughs> over here, man. Look, look. <laughs> Boy, you got Ooh. me scratching my head. Look at this. <laughs> he said, for by grace. Now, I tell people grace, if I could put it in a simpler term, is, is nothing more than an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So read that. For by opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For by opportunity you have been saved yeah. through faith. By opportunity. Mm -hmm. The opportunity of waking up with both eyes opening yeah. it up. The opportunity to wake up and remember your own name and social security number and date of birth. By opportunity... For you to be able to get into a vehicle that didn't crank on Thursday, but found up you got it turned on on Friday to get to the job where they're going to pay you by opportunity. Yeah, oh, God. By opportunity, you have been saved through faith. God took the opportunity to say, I will receive you unto myself in the body of Christ. Wow. Quit playing with this opportunity, man. Don't play with it. I tell people, grace is like a hall pass. <laughs> it gives you an opportunity to go where you're supposed to go according to the hall pass. So if I get a third period hall pass to go to the bathroom, it doesn't allow me to use a fifth period to go behind the gym. You're helping some kids out there now. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. 
He don't give you the opportunity to sneak out your window and run down the street and hang out with your homeboys and homegirls in the middle of the night and don't think God don't see it because the opportunity of grace saved you from getting T-boned. This thing real, man. Pastor, when I, when I, when I think about his grace, when I think about his grace, he gave me a second chance mm. by his grace. I should have been dead and gone, but by grace. Yes, sir. When I call myself hanging out in Chicago, gang banging, and the police put a pistol to the back of my head and told me I should have killed you. Wow. But God said, not yet. His huh. work is not done. His grace was sufficient. Some people call that luck. <laughs> when he had every right because I took the gun and I threw the gun. And when I threw it, he was on me like this shirt on my back. And he said, I should have killed you. Not I could have. Wow. I should have. Elder, but his grace. You're talking about it. And I'm with you on this, on this should have been dead thing. I go back to 1986. I took a bullet in my back, got it right now, a quarter inch from my spine, hanging somewhere I should have been hanging, mm. doing something I shouldn't have been doing, knew the Lord, grew up, knew God, knew how I was supposed to work, knew what I was supposed to do, but I had got it loose. I was out in a, in, a, in a territory I hadn't had a chance to experience, and I felt I had lost something. I wanted to experience it all. Riotous living. Can I call that? Yes, sir. That ring a bell for you yes, in the scripture sir. somewhere? Yes, sir. I wanted to have riotous living. All uh, drinks on me. <laughs> Two for ones. Lady got in free. I was there. Wasn't no party until Stanley Mary showed up. And God still through all of that saw grace that when they shot me and I fell out into the highway, the first, not the fifth, not the tenth, the first vehicle that slammed on brakes that almost could have ran me over was an empty ambulance. Wow. Wow. Where did that come from? Pastor, I'm just crazy enough to believe, man, <laughs> that somebody watching us tonight, that God has given them a second chance with grace. Wow. I'm just, I, I'm, Pastor, I'm crazy enough to believe that somebody is sitting there hearing and said, this word was for me tonight. Right. Because I walked out on God, and he allowed me to come back, and only by his grace that I'm able to return if I return. Wow. Blessed be the Lord. I pray that somebody's faith is increased tonight, that they were thinking about doing something to they said. Wow. I hear the spirit of the Holy Ghost saying right now, you were thinking of doing something you weren't supposed to do, and the Lord said, today was for you to hear me mm. and then listen to me. Hear that it's me. Listen to do something what I told you. Yes. And I'm praying tonight, as I see some folk that are, that are texting in some amens here, that your time is not yet. Yeah. Yeah. God said, I still have a place and a purpose and a promise for you. I just need you to believe it. Yeah. Once you believe it, what they say? If you believe it. You can receive. If you receive it, you can achieve it. Yes. Come on, man. This thing ain't hard. If, if that works in the secular world, why couldn't it work from heaven above that says, I will be with you even until the end of this world? I just want at least five blood-washed believers to start believing in the faith that they have, not be distracted by some cat, some cat, some dog, some person, some place, some thing, somebody whispering in the ear, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work. No, it won't work if I listen to you, yes. but I believe God says it's going to work yes. because he says all I have to do is wait on it to manifest, give me time to plant it, give me time to water it, give me time to nurture it, give me time to prune and plant, and then give it time for the harvest. Faith. Pastor, God is telling somebody tonight, I'm pulling you out of muck in the mowry clay. Yes, sir. It's your time. Jesus. What are you going to do with it? It's, this is your time. Today you was feeling like you wanted to give up, you wanted to throw in the towel, you wanted to call it quits. But this is your time, this is your moment. What are you going to do with it? By grace. By grace, I'm pulling you out again. By grace. Man, listen. I, 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 I believe my wife is probably listening in on this. Baby, listen. God is talking to the house of Murray tonight. You don't let not your heart be troubled, beautiful. Yes. yes. I repeat. First Lady Tamika Murray, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about what. Can I be transparent? Don't yes, worry sir. about what these doctors are trying to do. God says it's going to happen for you. He's going to be with you. He's going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about it because he loves you. Yes, yes. 
and he got a purpose. He got too many women out there that need to hear a word from you. Yes, yes. On their faith. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody receiving his word tonight. Oh, yeah. Somebody receiving <laughs> his word. Oh, if they're not, if it's two people, I know yeah. three, three in the room. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I, 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 I just know that God is talking to us. Look what he's telling us here. He's saying here, right in this scripture here, he's talking about keys to a lasting ministry. We're talking about faith. He says, for by grace you have been saved. By grace, you have been saved. By opportunity, you have been saved through what? You got to put something in the air to get somebody, yeah, okay? Yeah. Now, I, I know, well, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus paid it all. However, until I receive that as the gospel, yes. it's just gospel. Pastor, I always say you can't make a, dep- you can't make a withdrawal if you don't make a deposit. <laughs> you got to deposit something. And we, 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 somebody listened to us in that. We beckoning you tonight to make a deposit in Christ and believe by faith that you can make a withdrawal with happiness and gladness and joy and peace. You don't have to call it quits tonight because it's not your time. No, sir. Yes. No, sir. Yes, God. So now he's telling us faith is receivable. Then he's telling us faith is achievable. So now he's saying because your faith of what you believe, now he's basically telling you, the faith is believable. Amen. Amen. It's believable. If you believe it, you can receive it and you can achieve it. Look at what he says. He said, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. He's saying the grace is from him. But I'll use people, persons, people, places, and things to confirm my grace. You ever had, listen to him. You ever had somebody come up out of the blue? I remember one time going to purchase something. I'm going to go deeper than that. I'm going to give a little history. This is our church anniversary week. Yes. Amen. Nine years. Yes. I'm going to tell a story right quick. Okay, tell it. I remember we were, we, were, we were at a place. We were at a hotel. Got new owners. They were gracious enough to give us a little time limit. After a while, they said, look, y'all going to have to find out what you're going to do. Seven days, Delvin. He told me two weeks. I had to turn back around and say, sir, the Lord told me seven days. He said, no, I'll give you two weeks. He said, no, God told me seven days. Mm-hmm. I got to step on the seven days. Yes. Me and my wife rode around to 11 o'clock at night, Elder, for three days straight trying to find something. Couldn't find nothing to match up. Couldn't get, find nothing to be where it's supposed to be. Couldn't find nothing to, to be where we would have it to be. And then all of a sudden, I saw a sign for a building that had nothing to do with the church. It was a building that had a phone number. I called that phone number. Lady Elsa, I said, ma'am, I'm calling. I was trying to see. I know that the building you have is probably not set up for a church, but I was wondering if you might have any property or anything about your building. She says, no, I don't have anything. She says, um, that building is not, you know, uh, it's not up to par or not up to code. You won't be able to do anything with it as far as the church is concerned. I said, okay, well, thank you for your time. Lady called me back 30 minutes later. And began to tell me a story about a church she had, a property, about a church she had in there that needed to be moved. Mm. Not by me. And she said, I'm thinking about just going down and doing some stuff. I said, ma'am, don't do that. Right, right, right. I said, stop and talk with them. Let them know what God. She said, I don't know why I called you back. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This is the power of God. That's what I'm trying to get people to see. Yes, how yes. God will take folk and put them in a position that they don't even know why they're talking to you. Right, right. And begin to share things with you. They wouldn't have shared with anybody. Before we know, Elder, seven days. The building we're in right now, the people came and found us and said, please, come take a look. When God got something for you, all you got to do is stay faithful until it show up. What you cannot do is start second-guessing what you do not see because then you second-guess the message. Mm. You're too busy seeing the mess, so you miss the message. So once you miss the message, you you can't get up and say, I'm a messenger of God. I don't care how much you get up and and clap your hands and stomp and run around in this room 
and fall on the floor like a mullet fish. It don't do your liquor good until you believe that I am a messenger of God because the message comes from God and he recognizes the mess that I'm in, but he's washing it whiter than snow because he said that he would. Well, I'm grateful for this word tonight, Pastor, because <laughs> it was on time because I, I, my son was going through something. Yes, sir. And by the time I got off the phone, he was better. Amen. It had nothing to do with me. Amen. It had everything Amen. to do with God. To just pour in, because if I can pour into somebody else all day long. Yes. I can pour into my own child. Yes, sir. And that's why I yes, said, look, sir. man, you know God. Yes, sir. You know what God is capable of doing. Yes, sir. He showed up when you had no desire, you didn't even understand. Right. My God. This thing is so easy, Elder. I thank God for what he's done tonight. I pray that my brothers and sisters have heard God's word. They're excited about it. Please share this. Please. I, I thought this is over and it, and it loads. Please just go back and share it again at 8 o'clock. Share it again at 10 o'clock. It don't matter to me. But I'm, I'm challenging everyone who has listened to this tonight. Find five people God will tell you to send this to. Send this to them and then give them in, in the insert, my brother, this is for you. Please listen. Please don't delete this. Please don't, don't. Please take the next hour and just sit down wherever you are and listen to this because this is for you. My God, we thank you tonight for what you're doing. Uh, we want to ask that you would continue to keep us in prayer. Uh, continue to bless the house of God. You may see that God is doing some great things in your house of God, and we pray that God is continuing to do those things for you and with you. We also ask that those of us who are looking for the opportunity, let's say right now you don't have the opportunity to give your life, give your life to Christ, we accept you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Stretch your hands out wherever you are and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I come tonight, Lord, to say that I confess and believe that you died for my sins. So the Bible said, therefore, I should be and can be and will be saved. And I ask right now that when I get that, that I will not just sit on it. I won't just be a hearer of it, but I want to be a doer of it. And yes. whatever that takes, yes. move me to the next level. What's the next level? Lord, I now will say I don't have a place of accountability. I don't have a church home. I don't have a leader that, who can come and give me insight about my life. And they can share with me and I can share with him we can exchange the gifts of the gospel and I ask right now that you would see me to a place to call my own if that person is you why don't you inbox us right now why don't you say I am looking for a place of accountability and I believe that this is the house of God for me would you receive me as a member of this church under my own calling under my understanding of who God is to me under me just being a candidate for baptism whatever it might be I would ask right now that you would give me a place to call my own Lord God, for those who wish to give tonight, I ask for the power for them, the ability to go forth and give. We, we show now, Lord, how they may be able to do that. They may visit our website at www.mztcc.org. Uh, if they may want to give through our PayPal, which is already on the screen, God, we ask that they give them the ability to do that. But, Lord, we ask that we don't want them to think about giving. We want them to think about having value. Yes, God. Yes, and therefore, from whatever value they have in you is unlimited access to you. And once they have unlimited access to you, they have an unlimited spirit of giving to others. Yes. And so we ask right now for the faith to be an unlimited giver. We ask for the faith to be an unlimited hearer. We ask for the faith to be an unlimited doer of God's word. We ask this tonight in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, once again, this is Pastor Stanley Murray with my great brother, none other than Pastor Reggie Palmer. We thank God for y'all tonight. We yes. pray that you have heard this word. Please, 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 that's the assignment. Find five people. Yes. Find five people. Send them this word and let them know that God will take, take care, care of you. God bless you. God bless. Good night.